100% Patriot Campers is to blame for this. Stick around, see what I mean. How are you going guys? Steve here from Australian 4x4 Adventures podcast series. So this is going to be slightly different to the rest of my uh, YouTube channel. If you're new to the channel and you're just finding it for the first time, maybe think about liking, subscribing and what, what does YouTube usually say? I'll leave a comment down below. That's right. <laughs> I think I know that one. I've done it a couple of times myself. So in this type of podcast, I'd like to try and pick on small segments of the full driving industry and kind of pick it apart a little bit and just see what your opinion is versus mine. No, I'm not saying 100% that my opinion is correct or wrong, it's just my opinion. Just like your opinion is yours, we're all entitled to our own thoughts. But obviously get involved, ju um, jump in the comment section, start chatting with some other people, drop some comments down for me, and I, I generally try and reply to every single comment. So let's start this conversation about what we're talking about here. All right, so the premise of this entire video is based around needs versus wants in the four wheel drive industry. So if you look at every four wheel drive marketing campaign, apparently according to them, you need these these products in your on your car or in your camping setup to be able to go camping at all. Like if you can't if you don't have them, you can't it's kind of the marketing that they put towards you. And I've fallen in, into this trap lots of times and I plan on falling into it plenty more times to be honest with you because I like stuff like this. But I think they're creating an image of the industry that is almost unattainable for a newcomer and that it's putting people off joining in our hobby. Now, I know some of you are going to be like, yeah, good, there's already too many people doing it, too many people doing it, let's just, no, I don't want to encourage more people. And that's your opinion, it's perfectly fine. But I think the more people involved in our recreation, the more the government will see that it's an actual proper uh, pastime and industry, and hopefully uh, less tracks get closed because of it. But anyway, that's digressing into a completely different um, realm and, and genre of what we're talking about. So for this one, needs versus wants, and I'm, I single out Patriot Campers because it's kind of a compliment actually to them. It's, they make what they do look so freaking awesome, everyone feels that they need it in their life. It's not even a, a, a want, it's a, they need it. It's not, it's not, not something they can go without. So this is definitely not a dig at Patriot Campers, so don't, don't go having a go at me for that. It's just I'm using Patriot because they're one of the best in the industry for the way they market their products. Great, awesome for them. Uh, there's places like uh, Boss Aluminium and DMW and Razlar and all the rest of the places, all, all ranging from big to small companies. And they're all really good at what they do and they all make fantastic products. But do we need them? That would be my my question for the first part. So maybe if you're, if you're watching, maybe just pause it and just before we go too much further, drop, drop down in the comments below, do we need these accessories on our cars or do we just want them? So I'm gonna dive into that slightly here. So needs versus wants. So a bit of a list of stuff that's on my car as an example. And I'm gonna use my car as an example because that's what I've got. I'm not gonna try and speak for other people. I'm not them, so this is how I worked it out. Um, so we'll start at the front of the car. A bull bar, is that a need or a want? For some people, it would be a, a want because they don't necessarily need a bull bar. For me, it was a need. I wanted a winch, well, slash needed a winch. So this is what I mean about needs versus wants. So I'll, I needed a winch because of the way I use my car. I take it off-road, I put it in positions where potentially I'm going to get stuck, I'm going to need to self-recover, and even going out with other people, I need to be able to recover them. 
the other advantages to, to a bull bar would be the approach angle is improved, so it's better for four wheel driving, and it's somewhere else to mount some LED or LEDs or HID spotlights on the front of the car. I currently run the steady ones, so far pretty good, not bad. Um, from so that for me a bull bar for me was a need based on my requirements of how i'm going to use the car um jumping to the back of the car so say like a rear bar um unless pretty much the only reason i really needed a rear bar was to be able to get a long range tank underneath the back of the car without that i couldn't have a long range tank which meant i couldn't get a, get the range i needed when towing my caravan so for me that was a need to get the tire out from underneath to get a long range tank in and the rest is self-explanatory. Um, the added advantages, of course, is obviously it means I've got jerry can holders, the spare wheels up top, up higher, so it's easier to actually um, access and utilize. It just works nicely as an added benefit. They weren't needs, they were wants. The long range tank was a need based on the, on the traveling that I do. Um, middle of the car, sliders, Yep, I, I've already scratched and damaged them, so I'm going to say that they were a need because if I didn't, I would have done panel damage by now and it would have cost me more money fixing the car as opposed to just the sliders losing a little bit of paint. So that's a need for me. You might not need it though. If you don't plan, if you're just doing beach running, no, you don't need sliders because you well, the worst thing you're going to get is a bit of bloody um, sandblasting on your car. You'll be fine. Don't worry about it. Uh, um, I would almost say that adding all this extra weight is a negative to the car. D um, Dave from Dash Off Road, he's always advocated for keeping the cars as light as possible so they wheel better. And it's true, lighter cars do wheel better than heavier ones if you're only asked after full driving aspects of it. But I've got camping, towing a caravan, uh, I've got kids, so trying to keep all them entertained and everything else. So I need the room in the car, which meant that caravan all the rest of it so there is different requirements for me this is the challenge that you guys have of trying to work out what works and what requirements you have and that'll help equate out your needs versus wants um, other thing would be dual battery systems do you want to invest in a couple of grand of, of dual battery systems in your car versus buying something like the blue eddy unit behind me there um, or, the, or the eco flow ones <sighs> what's more beneficial needs versus wants do you even need a fridge in the car is that something that is required can you still survive with um with an esky an esky and ice i grew up doing that my parents that's all they had so it, it is very possible to do it that way so that's a really basic rundown of needs versus wants and my and my version of of what I'm talking about here. So it's it's that interpretation of the needs and wants. So that's pretty much where we're going to dive a little bit deeper into this. The downside to companies being so good at what they do with their marketing campaigns means that everyone feels that they need these items and they can't go bush without them. The, de uh, the other part of that is the cost. So all of these new inventions and, and well, not inventions, but new innovations, cost a lot of money i know cars that are costing upwards of two hundred thousand dollars to build and this is this is straight out of the showroom but like, cool if you can afford that go nuts uh, you probably don't need it and it's surprising how many cars out there i've seen on the tracks or in a caravan park that have thrown the entire arb catalog at a car and all it does is tow their caravan from caravan park to caravan park to caravan park and back home again you don't need it. If you're just the weekend warrior on, on the blacktop and you're not actually going anywhere, well, nowhere of, it, of any real risk, all you're doing is adding weight, fuel, and risk to your car of, I think it's probably unnecessary. And and it's the weight, and oh, I'm sorry, the money is a massive thing and you're just burning a hole in your pocket pretty much. Um, if you haven't seen it, John Cadogan, uh, auto expert, he's got another YouTube channel, he's made a really good video on... I say really good, I don't agree with all of it, but he's made a video on adding accessories to, to your cars actually diminishes the safety factor of your car. I agree to it, I'm not gonna digress too deep into it, I agree with it to an extent, but there's also a, a risk versus benefit 
reward factor there. So if you need this stuff, then obviously you're going to take a slight risk and slightly less safety in your car. He was very one-sided towards it. If you if you put a headlight, a spotlight on the front of your car, your airbags might not go, might not go off properly and you'll die. Oh, mate, chill out. It's a spotlight. It's fine. Anyway, maybe go check out John Cadogan as well. He's got some pretty cool stuff to stay on, say on accessories on your car, on the safety factor. I'm not going to get into it. I'm not a, a mechanical engineer like he is, so I don't feel that I'm qualified enough to say it. This is all an opinion piece based on my experience with the car. So jumping back slightly into the achievability and unattainability of people to actually get into this, this game thinking that this is the stuff that they need. So if they've basically gone out and they've gone, cool, I've bought a brand new D-Max because I've got a new car, I'm going to go camping, I'm going to go full drive, and, get, and then they're going to look at all of these ads and glossy magazines and YouTube channels and everything else going, oh, so so I, I, can't, I can't drive that track unless I've got a bull bar. Oh, oh well, I can't drive at night without a bull bar because I'm going to hit a room. It's going to, it's going to ruin my whole car. Like you can't even do one night drive apparently according to some of these advertisings. Um, there's so much of this stuff going on, which I fully understand from the company's point of view because they're out to sell their product. Perfectly understand that. Good on you guys. You're doing a fantastic job. Just look at the industry at the moment. It is booming. So clearly this is working for you guys. I'm just trying to get the point across to some of the, maybe the newcomers or even the experienced people when they, if they're setting up a new car. Do they really need this gear on their car? This is completely contradictory to basically a lot of what my YouTube channel is about because obviously a lot of my, a lot of the gear on my car is sponsored, whether it be free or half price or just discounted in general. A couple of the, my suppliers are going to be looking at me going, Steve, what are you doing, mate? You're, you're talking people out of buying accessories here. We're accessory sellers. I'm trying to keep it real here. <laughs> I'm not trying to upset anyone whether it be a supplier of mine or, or or you guys the audience i'm trying to just shed some light on think about what you're doing to your car before you actually do it so there's a lot of accessories out there that will, that you will need 100 percent that is a thing um, but there's also a lot there that you're only going to want and don't need and if you don't have the money and you don't have the time or you don't or don't let those items stop you from heading bush is pretty much the overall message here. The companies aren't gonna stop advertising the way they do. They're, they're out to sell their product. Awesome. What we need, I think, is more education to the end user, you guys, the audience, about what you do and don't need from there. Um, there's another great YouTube channel out there and social media person, Mad Matt, who very much advocates about safety off-road and learning how to use your car. That's pretty much the way I learned to four-wheel drive. Um, contrary to what I've done with this car, but I'm fairly experienced with four-wheel driving. I've been doing it for a lot of years now. I know how to drive and I know how a car feels. But the way I first learned how to set up a car and how to do it probably was by trial and error to an extent, which kind of costs a little bit more money sometimes. But that's where people like myself, YouTube, YouTubers and, and other people, online people who test review and and use items for you guys and show you what it does that's where it can help make edu um, an educated decision or choice on what you're buying where i was heading with this was <laughs> don't throw the whole catalog at your car from day dot the best way to learn how your car works and what you do and don't need is by adding one thing using it See how see how it feels. Let's let's use lockers as, as an example. So you've got a, a, a car with standard traction control. You go out, you're, um, you're full driving, you get stuck. Cool. You found the limitations of where that traction control will get you. You go home. You go you go to the shop. You get a rear locker fitted in your car. Cool. You go back out. You drive the same tracks. You're doing all the stuff, and you make it past that obstacle that you that you got stuck on before. So you've physically seen and you've learned what that one particular item will do for your car. It's it's trying to manage that expectation versus versus reality. I know a lot of people that will just chuck um, front rear lockers on their car from day dot, and they'll never actually use them, but they'll go, oh, I've got lockers in my car, I'll make it anywhere. I knew a person that used lockers on the, bloody, on the blacktop because he thought it gave him more traction until he broke his diff, because, you know, knucklehead. 
companies aren't going to stop their advertising. So educating yourself by watching YouTube channels and alike are going to help you make informed decisions for what you need versus what you want. Okay, so what are the pros and cons of companies doing all these mega builds? So when I say mega builds, obviously this is where the Patriot reference came in because they always call it like the mega tourer, the, the, the mega F truck, the mega Ram, the, uh, it's all everything bloody mega with them. You find a new word, people. Um, some of the original super tourers obviously were, were um, Patriot campers as well. So that they kind of pioneered with the advertising because there was other companies doing this before them for for builds but P patriot have advertised it really well to get it out to market so kudos to them for that will the pros and cons of that so pros let's just go through a bit of a list there pros are that the fact that they're innovating really well to make new products to market new designs um new technology new ways of doing things just new everything pretty much so there's different products that they've developed and made which make full driving camping so much easier stuff like a travel buddy not that patriot done that but travel buddy ovens weren't around 20 years ago i think i don't know maybe i should look that up back when travel buddies weren't around you basically, I knew people that just heated up their sausage rolls and, what, and pies and whatnot on the engine bay when they stopped for lunch. And just put it, put it, wrap it up in tin foil, sit it on there, close it, close the bonnet slightly. Twenty minutes later, at least it was warm. Like that's that's the best you could hope for. Now with travel buddies and stuff, which I reckon are a great invention for your car, twelve volt oven for your car, you can utilize it all the time, and it's so much more user friendly. Same thing. I think that is a, a want, not a need, but it's it's where I'm saying that these builds are developing products which do make the camping industry so much nicer to be in, sort of at the top, at the, at the higher end of it. Obviously, if you're just getting getting started out, to buy the, all this stuff from scratch is gonna cost you an absolute fortune. So I think at the higher end of the of the market, definitely all this stuff is, is fantastic. The cons to these companies innovating and doing all this stuff is price. There's a lot of time and effort for these companies that go into research and development, which costs a lot of money. So that money obviously gets trans uh, uh, translated to the cost of the item, and we as the end user have to pay it. So <laughs> there's that. Um, I think it's also gone too far in the sense of, I don't think every car needs a coffee machine in it, guys. Like It's just, it's just I like coffee and I've got one in my, in my caravan, 100% I do. But I don't think cars need coffee machines. I think that's where it's gone too far. It's a cool idea. It's something there. But I think that's some of the negatives of it. Sometimes they try and go too far and they're pushing the limits too much. It's just one of those fine lines in my opinion. Obviously, you guys are going to have an opinion as well. So chuck it down in the comments down below. Am I right? Should a car not have a coffee machine? Or should it? Um, Adam from ADU, uh, from Nuts About 4 Drive. I'm looking at you, buddy, with your coffee machine in your car. <laughs> Love it. All right, so in finalizing here, probably got a couple of minutes left here, so just stick with me, guys, please. Um, firstly, before we do go, don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment down below. And I'm really trying to get this channel to 50,000 subscribers. We're sitting at like 33 or something or 32 something now. Um, come on, let's see if we can do it. Let's try and get to 50,000 subscribers, shall we? So find the subscribe button. All right, so final thoughts on this would be I love where the full drive industry is going, but I think it needs to keep in mind the newer people in the market where keeping it basic, going back to basics, keeping things uh, achievable in a price point is 100% a, a point of the market that I think has been completely forgotten about. Everyone's gone for this bigger and better and, and it has to be the biggest, baddest build going. It's, I don't think that's necessary with mine. Like I literally told um, when we we're doing the suspension, I said to him, I don't want the biggest, baddest truck going around. I don't want it to be on 37s and a four inch lift and all this other stuff that all the all the big, all the big wanker boys do. <laughs> and you guys are gonna be watching this and you're gonna be, ah, they're mates, so they'll get it. Um, I don't, that stuff is cool for innovating. I don't think it's cool for the average user. 
I wanted to do, I don't want to say an average car, but I wanted to do something that's achievable and attainable for 90% of, of you guys, the followers, that you could build a car just like mine and it still drives perfectly fine. It's still perfectly legal. There's a whole nother video coming very soon about um, full drive shops doing illegal work to people's cars and just they'll chuck 37s and a 4-inch lift on a car and send it out the door. Where's the liability? Anyway, I digress slightly. Um, so I think it's a good thing, but there's a massive point of the market that's being missed for the, for the low end user that's just trying to get into the market. They're just trying to do the do the um to do the average stuff. Yes, there's kings. I get that kings have have and everyone knows my my opinion on kings. Kings have that point of the market. I guess I did kind of forget about them for a second, but they don't do all the bar work and the safety work and all the rest of the stuff that I that I think I know of, maybe? I could be wrong. If it, if it is, I'll put up on the screen and I'll say that I'm wrong. But from in my head right now, um, it's mainly camping stuff. I know they do exhaust and bits and bobs, but I don't think they do bar, like front and rear bars and stuff. But anyway, um, I don't know. That's just, this, this subject's been bugging me for a while. Everyone, I get so many messages on YouTube and Insta and, and Facebook and now TikTok because, yeah, that's a thing. I'm on TikTok now. I get so many messages from people asking me all these questions about, oh, what should I do here? And, oh, how much does this cost? And, oh, can I do this to my car? And you can do whatever you want to your car. It's perfectly fine. But the first thing I always ask people is, do you need it? Like, do you need to add that rear bar to your car, which weighs 60 kilo, I'm guessing a figure, and it's going to cost you four grand? Do you need it or do you want it? If you want it and you're still justifying it, go for it. I did. It's, I'm, half the stuff in my car, I just wanted and I could I could afford it, so I done it. I fully understand the want versus need factor. But if you're struggling and you're trying to just get the kids out camping and just do something and, and that's all you've got, don't let big companies with all their glossy magazines put you off not going because will put you off going because you can't afford the bull bar, the winch, the this or that. It might limit what you can do, but if you're happy with those limitations, that's perfectly fine. There's no need to try and find how, how deep, how steep the biggest, baddest tracks and trucks around. Do what's within your means is pretty much, I think, my overall message here. So, hopefully. All right, guys, so that is episode two of the podcast, Done and Dusted. As I said, don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment down below, and see you guys next week.